Great to see so many people here and so much interest in what we're doing. So I've I've been working on artificial intelligence technology for I guess 30 years now, which is, is a long time. And progress has actually been steady and considerable throughout those 30 years. But in the last few years, we're seeing a tremendous amount more more advancement than than we did before. The amount of data that's available the amount of, of hardware that's available and just the amount of communication between researchers in, in, in different places. And we're able to, to do a lot of things we couldn't, couldn't do before, even if we had basically the right algorithms and, and approaches. And Sophia is the most advanced of a number of humanoid robots that we're creating in our office in Hong Kong in our company Hanson Robotics. And there's a patented face material called Frubber, which is a mix of inorganic and, and organic compounds. Frubber has a very high degree of viscoelasticity and other favorable material properties. And what, you know, you don't need a human-like face to make a general intelligence. There's all kinds of possible general intelligences, and humans probably aren't the most generally intelligent creature possible. I'm sure we're not. On the other hand, if we want AIs and, and robots to absorb human values, and to understand people better and better, and to live socially and emotionally in the same world that we do. I mean, for that, having human-like ability to engage, you know, facially, emotionally, gesturally, this is this is really important. So the hardest problem and the most important problem is is, is in the mind. Like how 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 can we make these creatures really be as as intelligent as as they sometimes seem to be? So from my view as an AI researcher. I mean, this robot is really a technology platform, as 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 well as as a as a character and, and personality. And we can we can run a variety of different run a variety of different software systems on this on this amazing technology platform. When when we're using her in our research lab, we often run a tool called OpenCog, which is fairly advanced in terms of general intelligence. It helps the robot to understand what it's seeing in front of her. We ask her questions like, who, who, who just came in the door? Like, who's, who, who, who's next to Ben? What am I holding in my hand? I mean, that's, that's more childlike, right? Whereas when, when we have her give presentations on stage, like we did at the Web Summit today, we're using a simpler type of software, which is more, more decision, decision tree-like. And let's say when, when she's giving a speech like she did today, she doesn't necessarily fully understand every, everything that she's talking about. Like she talked about our singularity net, AI meets blockchain project, but she couldn't sit down and implement a blockchain or tell you what, what's in, in each block. Whereas when we're doing like open cog research on her, and she says, yes, it's it's Vida standing next to Ben. She does really understand what, what next to means, right? So this is, you know, the latest and, and we hope the greatest step in the series of AI projects that, that I've created together with my colleagues. When different AIs can talk to each other freely and ask each other questions, when one AI can outsource work to other AIs in a complex network of, of inter-referring AIs, then you have the potential for all the AIs around the world to self-organize into the sort of distributed global mind network. And I think it's important that this is decentralized and it's important for reasons that are social and political as much as, the, as they are technical. I mean, tens of thousands of AIs, or millions of AIs written by different people that can all talk to each other and, and build on each other's intelligence. I mean, there's an amazing number of ways AI could be valuable in an Ethiopian context, from helping farmers to diagnose crop diseases, to helping with smart power optimization of their, of their power system, to helping educate children by translating from local languages. And right now, these kinds of applications aren't especially on the radar of big tech companies or governments of first world countries. If you have a decentralized, democratically governed network of AIs that anyone around in the world can contribute to and benefit from, then not only do we have the best path to build general intelligence and the best way to provide, you know, low cost, 
high diversity and call the AI services to customers. You also have something anyone around the world can contribute to and, and benefit from, regardless of whether their local needs fit with the business models of, of a big company or a first world government. So I think there's, there's a lot of reasons why this sort of decentralized, distributed platform networking together different AIs into a greater whole is, is the way to go. And blockchain is part of the story. It's a powerful technology for, for developing this.